if you're competing in the competition as a coach, there are a few things that happen. The first is you get everybody to study everything. But then as you go through practice quiz bowls and things like that and practice uh, competitions, you'll understand who's good at what. So some people may be good at unit conversion. Some people may be good at word problems. Some people may be good at algebra. You know, um, some people may be good at geometry. So you find out who's good at what, and they are the unofficial lead for those subjects. So, but what you have to make sure you do not do is blurt anything out because they will take the first thing they hear as the answer. So you will have unofficial leads for each of the subjects by the time you get to the competition, right? But you're going to have that one spokesperson. So the idea is what will probably happen when a question gets asked, if it's in your field and you're the unofficial lead for it, all the heads will swivel towards you, right? So they're working on it, but you're the go-to person for that problem. And that's usually how it works. So that's where the practice comes in, right? You figure out what your field of expertise is. If you're good at angles, you're good at triangles, uh, tetrahedrons, and things like that, then geometry is your field. And you're going to be the go-to person for that. So everybody has something to add. And sometimes you surprise yourself. You're not the go-to person for unit conversion, you know, or exponentials. But you find that you remember this log base five, you know, of some problem in a crazy way because it was, you know, 2 a.m. and you, you know, just woke up and realized you knew how to do it. So those are where you get those learning experiences. But as a coach, I go to the go-to person and then you guys work as a team to come up with that final answer.